Hi, thank you so much for joining me for the July uh, Quilted Joy Clubhouse meeting. Um, I have a little secret to confess to you. Um, we actually recorded this earlier um, because I had to go in the middle of, of, well, late June out to Denver to record the next season of Fonz and Porter's Love of Quilting uh, show. And so because I was gone and on a plane and all that stuff, um, I just decided to come back and, and uh, lay low and quarantine at the house. So um, we went ahead and recorded this so that you could watch it. So um, there are some things that we're going to show you that were recorded earlier. So just know I'm watching this at home with you as well. Um, but we did record this earlier. And I appreciate you spending some time with me today. I've got a lot of great things planned for you as always. And we'll talk about what we've got on board for next month as well. So um, welcome. I'm glad you're here. And like I said, I will be um, over in the comments section reading everything this time since I'm not going to be um, on camera. So do uh, respond in there with what city and town you're in. I'd love to know more more about you. Um, hopefully you have joined us in the Quilt of Joy Clubhouse on Facebook. We do simulcast this live on both our Quilt of Joy uh, Facebook group as well as over on our Quilt of Joy uh, YouTube channel. So if there's someone you know that you think might be interested in this topic, um, the, the biggest compliment that you could possibly give me would be to share this. Um, I, you know, we spend a lot of time kind of creating stuff for you and thinking about uh, what would be helpful to other machine quilters and and truly the, the best thing that you could do to kind of show us your love would be to share it with someone that you know um, that you think would find this helpful. So I appreciate everything you do that, to support our little company here in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, we have had so much fun getting to know um, all of you as well. And um, do post over in the clubhouse. I'd love to see what you're working on. You know, what's under your needle today? What are you working on? Maybe it's uh, something for yourself. Maybe it's uh, something for another person. Um, anything you have to share we would all uh, really love to see it so you know we're curious that way we want to know what's going on in your quilty world too um, so do sign up too for our newsletter in our newsletter we share not only tutorials or some tips or tricks that we may have um, but we also share uh, links, fun links to different things that, that we find online in the quilting world that we think are um, interesting and we think that you'll enjoy um, exploring as well. So um, do make sure that you're signed up for the newsletter and um, you'll get that in your inbox. We send it out twice a month and we don't share your name with anybody. We hate spam too. We don't share it with a soul. So please know that we do take your privacy um, very seriously. So I just appreciate you spending some time with us. And then I hope that you're able to go over and take a look at our website. We had a complete uh, redo from the ground up of our website. And one of our goals was to make it faster and to make it easier to use. So there's a lot of great um, filters and search um, mechanisms that you can kind of drill down and find things. And then you'll find um, there's a whole learning center where we have lots of articles and lots of downloadables. And then there's also our blog where we post, you know, fun things that we're doing as well. So go over there and, and take a look. It's been a real journey to get this new website up and running for you. Um, as you might imagine, um, there are pitfalls to technology sometimes. So well, I think I have a few more gray hairs from it, but, but it's up and we're happy and we hope that you like it as well. So quiltedjoy.com, um, head over there. So today we are going to talk about feathers. Now we've been talking about, well, let's see, we talked about different spines for feathers. That was one month. We talked about um, putting feathers, um, doing them in an inside curve, doing them on an outside curve, and then we talked last month about how to put feathers in a square. So you kind of have your sea legs under you as far as direction and path, but maybe you haven't found your particular plume that you like that speaks to you. And I would say that there are definitely harder plumes and there are easier plumes. And so if feathers are something you struggle with, it may be that you just haven't found the, your happy place. You just haven't found the plume for you. The quilt behind me is actually a feather class that I teach. There are over 40 different plumes on that quilt. And we start out with the hardest one to make and then we never ever do that ever ever again because who wants to make the hardest feather ever? And by the way, the hardest feather ever 
is the Amish um, over the top feather because there's backtracking involved. And if you're not spot on with your backtracking, your eye goes right to it. And it's very symmetrical and the eye goes right to, if you hop out of your, your symmetry and something's all of a sudden asymmetrical, the eye will go right to it. So it's a very, very hard feather to make. And if that's the kind of feather you've been trying to make and you've been struggling with feathers, that's why. So let's find a plume that speaks to you. Find a plume that um, will be your new happy place. So the first one, I've got five to show you today. So the first one I wanna show you is um, a long arm feather. So I've got a spine here that I've drawn on my computer for you. And what's interesting about a long arm feather is that it doesn't touch. It's independent of each other. And so each plume grows off the spine and they don't really have anything to do with each other. They don't talk, they don't touch, they are independent. And then when you get up here, I would have chalked that spine out so that then I could stitch the spine back down and I would have you also always make your feathers from the bottom up. Going from the top down is super hard, so always the bottom up. And then I would come down here and I would do this side. Um, now I will say that long arm feathers are actually um, pretty easy to do uh, where you do both sides of the um, spine at the same time, where you don't do one side and then travel down and do the other side. So you may find that there are uses for this particular type of feather. I'm not a big fan. Um, it's okay. You can see, you know, there are areas here where I have more gaps than other areas. And so, I don't know, I kind of like the areas where there are fewer gaps than where there are bigger gaps. Of course, the caveat here is I quilt better than I draw um, and I'm drawing on a computer. So um, doodle this out, put this on paper, see how you feel about the long arm feather. But that is a super common beginner feather that I think um, will be a good place for you to start. All right, so let's look at, I think I can control Z. Okay, good, there's my spine. So let's look at a different feather that I think will be easy for you. And this one is called a hooked feather. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw the plume. And some people think of this as a half of a heart or even an ear, a teardrop, a paisley, whatever makes sense to your brain. When I get to the base of my plume, I'm gonna go back and echo that. And now I'm gonna come over for my next one and I'm gonna kiss the top of his head and I'm gonna echo back to the spine. And I'm gonna do my next one and I'm gonna kiss the top of his head and then I'm gonna echo back. I'm gonna kiss the top of his head and I'm gonna echo back. So do you see how it has that, um, and I would use my hopping foot as a guide here, so that I have like a quarter inch or an eighth of an inch space on that feather. But do you see how there's no backtracking? That's why this feather is more kind than that traditional Amish feather. So here I would go back down that spine that I had chalked and then I would start over on this side. And I'm just gonna try it a little bit faster. I'm not sure that I can get the um, echo quite as well. Uh, going faster with my pin, with my mouse. And by the way, I get asked this all the time. I'm just using a paint program. Now I'm a Mac girl. So this is called Paintbrush. It's just a free program. There's loads of programs out there. And then instead of using my mouse to draw, which is really hard, I got a graphic tablet. It's just a home graphic tablet. I think it cost about $60. Okay, so here I want you to notice, um, here's the, the top. And it looks kind of uncompleted, right? It needs like a finish, a flourish. So when I get here, I'm just gonna go ahead and put a terminal feather. That just means an ending feather. And then I'm gonna echo inside that terminal feather. And now, now I have a little flourish, a little period to the end of the sentence. Um, okay, so that would be a hooked feather. All right, so I'm gonna control Z. I'm gonna undo, 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 and get back to my spine, hopefully. One more. Ugh, it won't let me. Okay, so let me close this one. I got a new, 
new one behind it. Okay, so let's do that same spine. And again, I would try all of these on a gentle curve, not a deep curve, but not a straight line either. Um, straight lines are not easy to learn from and they are not easily found in the quilting world either. They're, they're rare birds, so why learn a rare bird? Rare, learn one that you're gonna actually use. Okay, so the next one I wanna talk to you about is a curled feather. And so the curled feather, this is one of my favorites. If you've been watching the clubhouse meetings, you've seen this one. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna curl in and then I'm gonna come back to the top of his head and then I'm gonna kick out. So it's like doing, it's two at once. Curl in, kick out. Okay, so I was telling you about my graphics tablet. So the company that makes the graphics tablet that I have is Wacom. And they make um, graphics tablets for like professional graphic designers that are like a million bazillion dollars. So don't get that one, right? Get the one that's just made for home hobbyists. And I think it's gonna be about 30, $50, somewhere in there. Okay, then I'm gonna come back down and I'm gonna do this side. And this is, again, I would do this, I would doodle this and doodle this and doodle this. And the place to check yourself is this slope as you come into the spine. And try to keep that at about a 45 degree coming into the spine. And um, as Karen McTavish uh, said, told me a long time ago, Think skinny thoughts, <laughs> which I love that. Keep your um, plumes skinny. So think skinny thoughts as you're making your plumes. Otherwise, your feathers, they turn into bratwurst. And I do have a bratwurst quilt. It was the very first, it was the very first uh, feather quilt I ever did. It looks like a little bratwurst, but it's mine and I love it. And it reminds me of how far I've come. So that one is um, curled feathers. Okay, so let's look at a different one that I think you'll um, find helpful and that one I call it sisters and so it's very similar to what we just did we have just got little sisters and big sisters so I'm going to do a little sister curl and I'm going to come back and I'm going to do a big sister and head back to the spine yeah little sister and a big sister and these are, if you look, if you think about it, these are kind of like long arm feathers because they really have, oop, I went the other way. They really have, um, it's hard to talk and draw and think all at the same time. Um, they really have nothing to do with each other, just like our long arm feathers that we looked at before. So they just kind of live in their own little space. So, I, I'm sure that there are other names for this style of feather, but we're gonna go with sisters today. And as I get up to the top, my sisters are gonna get smaller. I'm gonna head down the spine, and now I'm gonna do it this way. And you may find that you need three sisters, and not just two sisters. Kinda depends on the space that you're filling. And you may find you need more sisters. But this one is very um, forgiving because there's so much going on that the eye just can't even take in all of the different um, changes. Oh, I went the other way again. Sorry. My, my little brain trying to speak English and draw. Um, all right, and then let's do a little finial whoop, at the end. Okay, so I would call that one sisters. Um, all right, so we, um, the last one that I wanna show you, so I've shown you long arm hooked, curled sisters. Um, if, if all of those makes, make your brain kinda go, no, um, then let's not do feathers. Let's do leaves, because the great thing about leaves is that God made leaves in all different shapes and sizes. They are not symmetrical. A bug's eaten one and the wind's ripped off part of the other one. So it can be asymmetrical and the eye just forgives it. Okay, so let's take a look at leaves. So I'm gonna use my same spine, hopefully. There's my spine. And I'm gonna look at a leaf shape. So let's just talk about a leaf, sh a leaf shape first. Like I said, there's lots of leaf shapes, but one of the leaf shapes that I enjoy making has a little pregnant tummy 
See my little pregnant tummy up to the top. And then the back side of the leaf is just a bunny hop down, a C curve down. And then I can put a little uh, vein in there if I so choose. All right, so that's the basis of kind of my thought process of a leaf. All right, so I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna start making leaves and I'm gonna put a little vein in it. And I'm gonna just grow my leaves up my spine. And like I said, you know, there's just, there's so much variety that the eye just doesn't even notice when you aren't consistent. I'd come down the spine and then I'd start making leaves again. So if feathers are an, are an issue, don't feather, leaf it. You're still growing the skills and the path. And I'm gonna put that same little bloop you're still growing the feather, the path and the knowledge um, to make feathers um, as you grow your skills. All right, so let's take this to the millennium. And so the first thing I want to do, and I've got just a, well, I had, oh, there it is. Okay, so I've just got a, um, a chalk pencil. It's just a pastel chalk pencil. So let's do a little plume, a little spine there. I'm going to bring my bobbin thread up to the top and just take a little tacking stitch. All right, so let's look at our long arm feather first. So I'm going to go where each one is independent. I'm gonna head down my spine. All right, so there's, and it, it's called a long arm feather only because um, when long arms, you know, started becoming uh, on the market, uh, long arm quilters needed an easier way to do feathers and so that's why it's a long arm feather but you can absolutely do this on a sit down machine don't think that just because we're standing here at a long arm you can't use it on a sit down you absolutely can so there's the long arm feather okay so let's look at that hooked feather so I'm going to do another um, spine and then bring up my thread and let's see so I'm going to do my first my kind of half heart Come down to the base and echo that. And then kiss his head and echo back. And kiss his head and echo back. All right, I'm gonna come back down. And I'm gonna do this side. I'm going to kiss his head. So I am not worrying about, oh, I have eight on that side, so I better have eight on this side. Yeah, no. All right, and let's do, I don't know if I can. I've got these cords on the machine. If I can do a terminal feather, but I can. Okay, good. All right, so let me break my threads. I would normally take some tacking stitches there. And let me cut my threads so that you can see that. So there's my, there's my hooked, hooked feather. All right, and now let's go to the curled feather. And I'm gonna put a curl at the top of his head, I kick out a curl the top of the head I kick out. A curl. Other side. OK, 
Okay, so there was my curl feather. Let me bring up my threads so that you can see better. All right, so there's my curled feather. All right, let's do sisters. So remember, we got a little sister first, and then a big sister. Little sister, big sister, little sister, big sister. And literally that is going on in my head, by the way, because if I start talking or thinking or anything else, uh, a lot of times I will get lost. So when you quilt, I would highly suggest that you have something in your brain going on to help you stay on track because it's way too easy to have one of those squirrel moments, you know, where you get distracted and then you got to get out the seam ripper. What's that? Oh, <laughs> I did. Okay, so now you can see what my happy place is. All right, so look, I did. I went back here. I am telling you all to, to make sure you have something in your head or you get distracted, and there I go. Um, this is my favorite feather. This one, and I have one called the penguin feather. These are my two. Okay, so let's go back to sisters because they, they have some similarities to them. And apparently I, my little brain reverted back. Thank you, Kelsey. So, so obviously on one spine, I would not mix plumes, but you can definitely see which plume my brain likes the best. All right, let's do that same little All right, boy, that was funny. I didn't even notice it. I didn't know what you were saying, Kelsey. I was like, what's she talking about? Different plume. Yep, sure enough. All right, so let's see where my brain went. Eek! So I came down the spine and my brain just reverted back to my favorite as opposed to what I was showing you. So, all right, and then let's look at leaves. Let's see if my brain can stay on track for leaves. So there I am at the bottom. And I'm gonna do a leaf and I'm gonna put a vein in it. And I hope you notice that, you know, each of these leaves is a little different. You know, none of them are exactly the same. Come on down. Leaf, Angela, leaf. All right, there I go. And if you have a big space to fill with leaves, you could put a little tendril. Whoop. Right, a little like um, shot of ivy, an ivy tendril. You could even do it between each one. And I also would not recommend that you use, you know, bright yellow thread on blue fabric. Choose something that's a little bit more, it blends to be a little bit more forgiving. Okay, so I kind of I kind of blended this one as well. So this side I did all leaves. And then this side I started to put in tendrils on every other one. So hopefully you found those helpful. Hopefully you will find your happy place. Doodle them on paper and then I would love for you to share your doodles on the Quilted Joy Clubhouse. So what is your happy plume? What is your happy place? Um, I, I think that you'll find one and you'll your brain will kind of go there naturally. Um, you already know what mine is. Um, and I do have a bonus for you because there's another feather. It's called the Garden Gate. Feather, and I have a whole downloadable worksheet with step-by-step -step directions of how to do it. And what I love about the Garden Gate um, Feather is that it, it deliberately crosses over and careens into the other feather plumes on the spine so that it's super forgiving, super forgiving. Um, if you would like that, sign up for our, web, for our um, newsletter at that link that you see on the screen and that'll get you that download. If you're already on our newsletter list, no worries, still go in there and it'll still get you the downloads so that you can play at home and take a look at the Garden Gate feather. So hopefully um, one of those feathers will work for you. And it occurred to me, Kelsey, that um, we do have a book 
that has, we've talked about all of these plumes and how there's so many kinds of plumes. So we'll put a link in the description that has, um, it, it's a link to uh, Beth Ann Nemish's um, uh, book all about feather plumes. And I don't know how many plumes she has in there, but my guess is it's approaching 100 plumes. Um, and she has them starting out with easy, medium, medium hard, and hard. So that you can kind of take the same feather shape and then do things with it to make it more complicated. Um, so you can dial it up or dial it down however you like. So it's called The Fast, The Fancy. And um, we have that book um, in stock. And it's uh, Beth Ann Nemish, and she's a fabulous teacher. And I think you'll enjoy that book. So, um, so look for that. OK, I want to thank our sponsor, APQS. Um, APQS is 100% handcrafted in Iowa and love the world over, so quilt forever with APQS. If you are interested in long arm machines, um, do contact your uh, local APQS dealer or your local APQS store, or go to APQS.com for more information or to find your local store or local dealer. Um, thank you, APQS. We really appreciate all that you do. All right, so now we are going to go over to the studio. You're not going to believe the studio. Um, this too, she's in Texas. Um, this is Terry McMillan, and we recorded this earlier, so I'm, I'll be in a, a totally different outfit and much longer hair, because I did finally get my hair cut after all this quarantine business. <laughs> um, so um, I think you'll love it. So let's take a look at Terry McMillan's studio. Hi, Terry. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's good to see you. Hi, it's so nice to see you again. Where are you located, Terry? I'm actually in Northeast Texas, a very small town of Hughes Springs. Hughes Springs, okay. Yes. So how long have you had uh, your long arm machine? Well, this long arm machine I've had since 2017. Well, I bought it at the Houston Festival, so November. Okay. Um, actually, it was delivered in 18. Um, I had a Millie before in 2009, and I ended up selling it in 2012. Got it. So. All right, so let's be nosy. I want to see your face, so flip the camera around. Okay, so, so this is my sp sewing space. Wonderful. I, uh, we took our game room slash pool house and turned it into my sewing space. Oh, you've got so much space to organize and drawers. So you piece in here as well. Yes, this is my my she shed. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. And so um, I, I I get distracted by all the windows and the the view that you have as you're standing there at your machine. So that's amazing. Um, so tell me your machine there. What size table do you have? I have a twelve foot. A twelve foot, and it's a millie. It is a Millie, and I do have also have my IQ. And you have a sticker on the back of your Millie, and I want to know what it is because it looks fun. What is that? Oh, I decorated her. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. All right, and I want to be nosy. You have something under each of the feet of the machine. What, what, what do you have there and why? Um, when I bought this Millie, I did not get the hydraulics, uh -huh. and I cannot lift it. I'm tall. So for it to be a really comfortable height for me, we put little, um, I think they're two or four inch, um, the risers you would use for uh, a bed. Got it. And they're right. shock, they have shock absorbers on the bottom also. Mm. So, yeah. That, so that helps too with that tile floor. It does. That looks like a table you would have in an automotive section. I actually saw one of our, your, your videos with one of the ladies and she had this and I immediately went on Amazon and ordered it. <laughs> so it, it's, it's on wheels. It rolls around and I don't have to keep going back and forth to a table. I just move it where I need it and it's got everything I need on it. So and it's got a drawer as well. It does. Well, I'm going to have to give me one of those too. And I see you've got um, magnetic bars on your frame. Do you use those? To I do use those. Yes. Mm -hmm, to float your your uh, fabric and yes. keep them taut. Yes. Fantastic. All right. So you, um, where do you keep like all of your threads? Okay. I'm trying not to make you drunk when I turn the yeah. camera. <laughs> um, I just have drawers. I keep them in. Uh -huh. um, the one thing about this room when we moved in, it, it's a just a big square room, so it had no storage, no closets or anything. Uh -huh. But I just mainly keep everything in. 
Yeah. Oh, All they're the so drawers. pretty. So they're so pretty. Yeah. Oh. And that way they stay out of the sun too. Uh -huh. so. Yeah. And so you've got a design wall there. I do. I've had this. Um, we've actually, I've had this since 2010. Uh -huh. um, it's two four by eight foam boards. Mm hmm and they're covered in polar fleece, like a um, pillow sack, a pillow case. Sure. And then my husband mounted them on the wall. So very nice. And you've got all of your rulers up there on the wall and like a wooden uh, holder. Um, those are like sewing piecing rulers, mm -hmm. um, long arm rulers. The few that I have, I have a, um, my Alex drawer from Ikea that I keep those in. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I like that you have a little area to sit and so you can look at a magazine or read or just kind of take a break. Oh, yeah. My, occasionally, I, my husband will come out and sit with me and watch TV. Oh, okay. All right. Now, show me your ironing space because it looked like you had kind of designed that on your own. Um, I had the big board that was on an actual ironing board and it was a little wobbly. So I ended up going and this was just, you know, the, the wire rack that had five but you know, it comes in two halves. So I use the bottom half with the casters and the board fit right on top of it. Wow. And then just, uh, I think last week I got my um, wool, oh, right? my wool mat. And do you but like the wool mat? I do. I have a small one that I take to retreat, but uh -huh. I really wanted a big one to fit my whole board. So I was able to go to uh, they sell it by the yard and it's 60 inches wide. Oh, so um, I just trimmed it down to 24 by 60 and I have a few pieces left over. Cool. All right. So where's all your fabric, Carrie? Because I know you got the fabric. So where's all the fabric? Actually, I'm probably one of those strange people that does not have a stash. Really? <laughs> I, do, I don't buy fabric unless I know what I'm going to use it for. Yeah. So basically, these are just leftovers. Uh-huh. Wow. Um, fabric that I have all the fabric? Huh? You, tell, you tell me that's all the fabric you have? That is all of like, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It's leftovers. Uh -huh. um, actual projects, yeah. a little OCD. Mm. Uh, I have all the fabric, the pattern, and usually the backing. And I have over here. <laughs> oh, so you don't accidentally use it for something else. Right. I, I am a project buyer. Uh -huh. I don't, I can't go into a quilt shop and just buy fabric if I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. And I love your chair. Tell me about that. Cause it looks different than any chair I've seen before. It's a um, separate tool, but it has a back to it. It does. Um, I realized I was working on a quilt for my sister, uh, a few weeks ago. It was a double Irish chain, um, 10, 110 by 110. And so my offsetting blocks, I was doing IQ and I was having to babysit, but I was also doing straight line ruler work in the chains. And I was finding my back was killing me just standing all day long. Like, especially when I would babysit the, the IQ. Turn the camera a little bit so we can see it here. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Yeah, we were. So um, I basically, I just off of Amazon ordered a saddle chair, but I got the back. Uh-huh. So cool. it just, um, it, if I just need to sit and babysit the mm -hmm. IQ, it, I have something to lean against. That's awesome. I have a saddle chair, stair, saddle stool chair too, but it doesn't have the back on it. And I, I do appreciate that you've got a floor pad there. So when you stand, you've got something cushy to yes. stand on. So you're not yes. wearing your feet out on the, on the tile. So mm -hmm. you have a glorious face. Uh, Terry. Can you turn the camera around so we can see your smiling face? There you are. There goes. So, all right. So I'm interested in what three things you would recommend to your bestie. They don't have to be quilty related, but what would you recommend to your bestie? Uh, one, never stop learning. There's all, there's, there's, there's tons of information out there and people willing to help you. Um, if you don't find joy in it, you need to move on to something else. And in that aspect, try everything. You may not like it, but it might be just your, your new favorite thing to do. Uh, my best friend and I, we are in the final steps of finishing a Lucy Boston all English paper piece. And we love it. We take it everywhere we go. That's but awesome. I would have never thought I would do handwork. 
Yeah. So you never know what you're going to like. Try it all. Know. And come back to it because it may be that you just weren't in the season of life where that spoke right. to you. And then later on, it will speak to you. Yeah. I think I've taken classes with, I mean, I've taken them with lots of people and I'll do it for a little bit. And I was like, you know, this is really not my thing. Move on to something else that I enjoy. Yeah. All um, right. Well, thank you so much, Terry. It was wonderful uh, spending some time with you. And I love your new space. I love that everything you've done, you've got everything laid out exactly. I know that supports you and helps you be creative and it was a joy to see it. So thanks so much. Thank you. It was good to see you again. All right. See you later. Bye. Thank you so much, Terry. Um, we really appreciate the time that you took uh, to share your space with us. Doesn't she have a glorious space? I, I think I'm a little jealous because right now my sewing room doesn't have um, windows. And so to see some of the sewing rooms with the windows, um, no matter how big or small they are, um, that natural light is just so nice to have in your sewing space. So um, Terry, it, you did a beautiful job with your, your sewing makeover room and um, it's very nice. Thank you so much for showing it to us. Um, okay, so my favorite things for this month, of course, it's July 4th um, coming up. And what we've got is um, some paper pantographs that are in a bundle that are, are our patriotic pantographs. Boy, that was a real mouthful. Um, and so there's Star Dance, um, Shooting Star, and Swirly Stars. So let's see, the, the Shooting Star... Um, I'm trying to see who designed that one. It's Becker's Shooting Star is that one. And the other one is Star Dance. Um, and that one is also by Barbara Becker. I just found it in Barbara Becker. Um, and then this one is Swirly Stars. And that one is by Deb Geisler. So um, if you are interested in the Pantograph um, bundle, um, I have a coupon code for you. It's 10% off um, the bundle. And that coupon is good through Saturday. Um, oh, sorry, Sunday, July the 5th, Sunday, July the 5th. So that 10% uh, off our patriotic um, Valor paper pantograph bundle um, is good through July the 5th. Um, and if you are enjoying the Quilted Joy Clubhouse and getting something out of it, um, I would love it if you would leave us a review on Google. It just helps all those Google algorithm things um, kind of bump us up so that other people can find us. So um, that would just help us reach more people, help us find more uh, machine quilters who want to uh, talk about my favorite subject. I bet it's your favorite subject too. Um, so if you would leave a, a Google review for us, I read every single one and I really appreciate the time that it takes you uh, to leave that uh, review for us. It helps us grow and I appreciate it. Um, okay, so normally I select a quilt that people, someone posts in the Quilted Joy Clubhouse group on Facebook and then tell you how I would quilt it if it were my quilt. This time, I'm gonna show you how I quilted a quilt. Now, it wasn't my quilt, but it was a, a, an old friend and I did, I've had her quilt for quite some time because she was being very patient with me. And so I finally got it done for her. Um, and it's Jennifer's quilt, so take a look at her quilt. So it's a monster quilt, it's so big. Um, if, if only you could see, there are two of us behind it on our tippy toes on ladders trying to hold this thing up. It's so big. I, I don't know what the size is, but um, it's, it's easily a king and more. Um, and so this was a block of the month that Jennifer did, and it's a sampler quilt. Um, and it, it, sampler quilts are a little bit intimidating because you've got so much going on. And how do you bring all of those blocks kind of together in one voice? So in looking at her quilt and kind of thinking about how I would break it down to quilt it for her, the first thing that really jumped out at me were these heart shapes. So these, um, these, this patchwork here, these hearts here, they really, really jumped out at me. And I was like, how can I um, enhance the traditional nature of this quilt and also embrace these hearts? And so I decided I was gonna put a feathered heart, a, um, it's not a feathered wreath, it's a feathered heart um, inside those, um, those heart shapes there. And so that kind of led me down the path to look at other shapes that I see in the quilt. And so these little kind of spiky things that are repeated, so these spiky things here are repeated in these spiky things over here. And I started to think about how I would kind of enhance those spiky things, but I really hadn't like 
narrowed them down yet. So once I took a look at this block, that's when it all kind of popped in my, into my brain because these same like little spiky units are these, this same little spiky unit here. Same, same, same. Spiky unit here is the same as a spiky unit here. And so I thought, well, okay, what, what could I do in those spaces? And what it, it told me as I looked at her quilting uh, fabric that she used, so lots of roses in her quilting fabric, lots of florals, I thought, well, these kind of look like um, tulips or roses. So how could I kind of enhance that shape to bring out those tulips or roses? So let's take a look at the next one because I want to show you what I did. Okay, so these, this, this unit here, that was my launching off point for everything, was that unit there. All right, so the first thing I do when I attack a block is I look for my magic portals. I look for how I'm gonna enter the block and exit the block so that I can do things in a continuous path. And I look for my eligible spots. So my eligible, eligible spot was, oop, was there, let me try that again, was there, or there, or there, or there. Right, those are obvious, yeah. Another eligible spot would have been the tips of these. Any of those all the way around. So I started to think about how I could enter the block in those portals and I thought, well, if I just do a little bunny hop to that entry point, that will get me into the block. And so for this, because it's such a long span, I did, I did use a ruler to get me there so that I had a nice, um, arc that matched all my other arcs and then I went freehand so I used a ruler just for that and then everything else is freehand okay so I dropped into my block here and then I marked um, with uh, just a, my favorite marking uh, fabric marker um, and made this into quadrants so I traveled down the middle of the block and I swooped up to this entry point into this portion of the block and while I'm here, I went ahead and dealt with these little bitty triangles um, the first time I hit them. Because if I miss them the first time, I can always go back the second time. But if I, if I don't deal with them until the second time and I miss them, I've missed them. So I'm going to always hit things the first time I see them. So I just decided to do a little curl in that little triangle. And then a little curl in that little triangle. And head back to my start. Curl. Curl. And back to my start. And now I'm ready to tackle my flower. And so the shape, I just swooped up, echoed down, echoed up, swoop, and then I added a little S curve just on one side. And now I'm gonna travel back down to my center. I went up and did a little curl, and then I touched this tip. Just in case I need to exit or enter another block, in the rest of my quilt, I want to touch my portal so that I can always sneak through them and nobody will know if I snuck through them um, at somewhere else in my quilt. So I touch the portal and then I'm going to come back down and head back down and go back up to this one. I'm going to hit the little curls right when I come to them so if I forget, I can always hit them again and then head back and do my flower. All right, and then I'm gonna head back to the center. And I could go all the way around, but what I found was if I do just the north half and I go all the way across my block, so from, east, from west coast to east coast, then when I come back from east coast to west coast, I can do the southern half of my blocks so that I can do all these in one continuous path. So then I would head out, I would exit. So there's my curl, I'm gonna to touch my portal and now I'm gonna bunny hop over to the next block. So that when I come back, all right, so here I'm gonna come back. Ooh, let me make that, okay. When I'm gonna come back, there we go. All right, so there's my bunny hop in, and then I just echo down, travel back to the center, come back, and now I'm ready to do the same thing we were just talking about, you know? And travel all the way around my block, do notice that my little tulip rose shape, I'm always putting, let me change colors so that it's more obvious. Let's use yellow. I'm always putting the, this bit on this side of the flower. 
right? So that it's always on that, what would that be? The right side of the flower as it spins around. And so I would continue on. So that's how I'm gonna travel from left to right and then from right to left on my quilt. Okay, so that one, um, there, and there's loads of that particular block. So once I had kind of that in mind, I wanna go back here to um, this one. And you'll notice that this one is, is the same thing. I mean, it's, I went ahead and did this same thing um, inside all of these uh, shapes. All right, so let's take a look at the next uh, block that's super common, and that's the smaller version of it. But it's kind of offset, it's kind of asymmetrical. So I've got my bunny hop in, just like I was doing before. Here I'm gonna turn back to blue, because I think you can see blue better. And then I did a smaller bunny hop in. So I've got magic portals here, yeah? I've got a magic portal there, I've got one there. So all of those magic portals I need to think about, that's how I can enter and exit the block. And then I've got this center space, and I wanna kinda reflect what I did before, but I just added an extra bit to it, an extra, um, so there's eight here instead of four. So I just did a bunny hop into the center and a bunny hop out to the same little curls that I was doing before. So I'm just trying to relate what I did before to this block. I'm trying to repeat shapes. I'm trying to repeat uh, treatments. And I have this space here up above it that was blank, but because of its neighbor here, it kind of created this natural extra block. And so I decided to go ahead and stitch out a square and kind of create where, where the patchwork did not have it, another piece to her quilt. And in here, you may recognize that curled feather that we did um, uh, earlier in the clubhouse meeting. And to start it out, what I did was a, um, a comma puff. So I did, I came in, almost made a whole circle. Just before I made a whole circle, I would change my mind, come back down. And now I'm gonna do that curl and kick out and that curl and kick out and that curl, and kick out, and that gives me that feather inside that space. Okay, so then I'm back here, I'm gonna come back to the center, and then I'm gonna touch my portals, because I wanna make sure if I ever need to use them on a different block, because I forgot something, I have the ability to do so. And now I'm back to the same shape we had before, it's just a little different. And so because these were all of the same fabric colors, so I use that same, kind of rose tulip shape, but instead of the curls in these little subtle triangles, since they were the same fabric as my actual flower, I just put little like ferny leaf uh, things in here. Looks like mine look better than what I just drew, but you get the idea. Okay, so we're gonna come back down to the middle and we're gonna come out here and now I can bounce out and bounce over. Again, I'm doing that north half from left to right across my quilt, and then I'll come back from right to left and do the southern half of my block so that I can go by using these long bunny hops and to connect between each of the blocks, I can walk all the way across my quilt and come all the way back. All right, so let me go to this last one. Um, oh, that's just a close up I wanted you to see of that plume going the other direction. Sometimes it's helpful to see them, how they go in both directions, because um, of course you'll have to be able to draw them in both directions. Okay, so there you go, Jennifer. Jennifer hasn't seen this yet. Um, so she, um, she will have though by the time this, this, um, um, we air this. But uh, let's zoom in just because I want to show you, hopefully you can get a better sense. Let's zoom in one more time and see. I'm hoping you can get a better sense of how it all came together and how these long bunny hops really kind of tied everything in on the quilt between these sampler blocks. And I just reused, you might be able to see it here, I just reused those tulip uh, rose shapes in as many places as I could um, in these sampler blocks to tie that motif together. And then as far as this um, feathered um, uh, heart, I chalked in my spine. Hold on, let me do it again. I chalked in my spine. And then I did that same um, curled feather that we did before here today. I told you that was my little happy place. So I did that curled feather um, using our outside curve skills that we talked about before to travel around 
and then came back in and did the center. And so all of those, and then on the sides here, <clears throat> let me get rid of this. On the sides here, I just did a half. So these are a half of a heart. And then as far as the outside border goes, I wanted to keep it a little bit simple. So this outside border is just a diamond um, trellis. So I, I chose this point and this point, connected those. So I'm letting the patchwork create the map. And just kept it simple because I knew whatever was on this fabric out in the border, you weren't going to see it. Um, <clears throat> all right, so let me go back to number one. So there you go, Jennifer. Um, I know you're going to love it, and I'm so sorry it took me so long to get it to you, but I hope I hope that you I hope that you like it. Okay, so next month on Wednesday, August the fifth at one o'clock Eastern, we are going to talk about fitting feathers into a setting triangle because it's a little different than the other shapes that we've talked about and the things to consider when you're looking at, <clears throat> pardon me, when you're looking at a setting triangle. Um, I would encourage you to um, go join us on our social media channels. We are on Facebook. You can join the, the, um, the Quilted Joy Facebook page as well as the Quilted Joy Clubhouse uh, group there on Facebook. And then we're on Instagram and I generally post more things that are kind of like things going on in my personal world on Instagram. And then of course we have our YouTube channel as well. So thank you so much for joining us and I will see you on Wednesday, August 5th at one o'clock Eastern.